Check out this video where we're gonna show you around one of Bali's hottest temples, Uluwatu Temple. We'll fill you in on the major thing to watch out for when you visit, spill the deets on what to expect, and give you the lowdown on the best way to get there. Ready? Let's jump in! Thinking about checking out Uluwatu Temple, it's pretty easy to do and you don't necessarily need a guide, although having one wouldn't hurt. Someone can at least assist you in taking pictures or keeping an eye on the cheeky monkeys. At Uluwatu, you've got this bunch of wild monkeys just casually strolling around the temple grounds. And let me tell you, these little guys are like expert level thieves. There's this massive 11 hectare forest surrounding the temple and more than 400 monkeys are just chilling out there, calling it home. Now, believe it or not, some researchers actually took the time to study these notorious Uluwatu monkeys. Turns out, they've got this unique tradition of snatching stuff from unsuspecting tourists and then trading it for bananas. And trust me, these monkeys put the ones at Ubud Monkey Forest to shame. These Uluwatu temple monkeys are all about the high-stakes game of grabbing phones and sunglasses. It's a breeze for them since the safety fence by the cliff is, like, shoulder height, and you've got tourists casually strolling by with their phones out. It's a monkey heist waiting to happen. If you're planning to snap pics at Uluwatu Temple with your phone, be super careful and keep your eyes peeled. Those monkeys are sneaky and can swipe your phone in a flash. If you rock a cap, make sure it fits snug. Otherwise, those little thieves might try to snatch it too. The temple staff might be able to help if you lose something to the Uluwatu monkeys. They'll try to trade it for bananas, and usually it works, but no guarantees. One time, I saw a monkey quickly grab sunglasses from a lady who was snapping photos. It happened in just two seconds. So you might want to skip wearing sunglasses, earrings, or a cap and make sure to hold onto your mobile phone tight if you decide to check out that area. When you step into the Uluwatu Temple Zone, just go with the flow of the local vibes and throw on some traditional Bali gear. Wrap a sarong and belt called sash around your lower half. No worries, they've got communal robes and belts right by the ticket booth. And hey, if you're rocking long pants or a dress, just pop on the sash and you're good to go. You can't actually go inside the temple or get up close to the pagoda. You just check it out from the outside while strolling along the cliffs. It might be a bit disappointing for some, but in my opinion, the cliff views are where it's at. There's something magical about watching the waves crash on the 75 meter high limestone cliffs at Pura Uluwatu while the sun sets over the Indian Ocean. The ancient folks definitely picked the perfect spot for this pagoda. If you want to dodge the crowds, consider going earlier in the day, but then you'll have to deal with the heat. Personally, I think it's worth facing the crowds to catch that epic sunset. Chilling at Uluwatu Temple for the sunset is a must in Bali. Loads of folks and monkeys gather here every evening for the spectacle. When the Uluwatu Temple sunset hits, those white limestone cliffs go all golden, and even the monkeys dig the cool ocean breeze as the sun dips below the horizon. It's a gorgeous show, man. At 6 p.m., Every day, there is a traditional kikak dance performance at Uluwatu Temple. Tickets need to be purchased separately, and it costs 70,000 Indonesian rupiah. It's open seating, so the early birds get the seats first. So Uluwatu Temple sits way down in the southwest corner of Bali. It's about an hour's drive from Kuta, Kangu, Sanyur, and all those hot tourist spots in the south. But brace yourself for the possibility of getting stuck in traffic, especially after sunset, when everyone's on the move. Your best bet for reaching there is to either snag a day tour of the Uluwatu Bali area or hire a private car and driver. You can easily book both of these online. I wouldn't suggest rolling up in a one-way taxi though. The place is pretty remote and you'll end up forking out a crazy fare to get back to town, especially after sunset when the taxi drivers seem to vanish into thin air. The history of Pura, Uluwatu goes way back, according to those ancient Balinese writings. We're talking at least the 11th century, maybe even earlier folks. So there was this Javanese Hindu priest, Mpu Kuturan, who kicked things off. Then along comes Dang Hayang Nairartha, who did some serious meditation by the cliffs of Uluwatu before putting together the temple grounds we see today. They believed Pura Uluwatu was like a direct line to heaven. And even nowadays, the Balinese Hindus see it as one of the top tier temples on the island. There are heaps of temples scattered in the whole Balai. If you have limited time to spend in Bali and don't know which one to visit, we have this Bali Temple Bible embedded in our Bali travel plan to help you to make the decision. This ready to use travel plan will be shared for free in the last video of this Bali trip. Curious about other must-see temples to explore in Bali? You can't miss this one. Thanks for tuning in.